Good morning and welcome to Lutheran Church of the Cross. It is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, thank you for joining us if you're here in person and hello to you, including all the way out in Florida, Tammy, um, those of you online. So we will start with our opening hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 807, and you may remain seated. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. 
claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. first reading for today is from the first book of Kings, chapter 19. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to the cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so the strong, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. Then there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life, too, to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, a king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shep Shepha, of Abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Here ends the first reading. Uh, please join me on page two of your bulletin. And we'll uh, read responsibly uh, Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, truly your, your salvation, salvation is very near, near to those, those who fear you, that, that your, your glory, glory may, may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Where righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness, faithfulness shall spring, spring up from, from the earth, and righteousness, and righteousness shall, shall look down, down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness, righteousness shall go, go before, before the, the Lord, Lord and, and shall, shall prepare, prepare for God, God a pathway. Friends, the reading, uh, reading the, the psalm, please uh, join me for the second reading from the book of Romans, chapter 10. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss. This is to bring, to bring Christ up from the, de the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim because if you, you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For anyone, everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Here ends the reading, word of God, word of life. Please rise as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased and those in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Often when we look at today's miracles in Matthew's gospel, whether we're preaching or reading, when we look at Jesus and Peter walking on the water, we focus on Peter. We admire his faith, in fact, after the service, Mark and I are going to share a song with you from a band called Casting Crowns. And the first, first verse says, oh, what I would do to have the kind of faith it takes to climb out of this boat I'm in, onto the crashing waves, to step out of my comfort zone into the realm of the unknown where Jesus is and he's holding out his hand. But we know that faith didn't last very long. When Peter saw the magnitude of the storm, he faltered. And even though we admire that initial leap of faith, let's think more deeply about what Peter said to Jesus. If it's really you, Lord, then command me to come to you. Maybe Peter's faith wasn't that admirable. Jesus saves him anyway, but chastises him with you of little faith. And maybe there's a little more to it. It is said that Peter is representative of many of us, or we all have a little bit of Peter in us. Can you think of a time, a storm, literal or figurative, when you demanded God give you proof of God's identity before you took the next difficult step? Or a time you asked God for a miracle that affected no one else but you. Sometimes we have little faith too. But remember, if Jesus would build his church on Peter, the rock, despite all his doubts and questions and missteps, then there's room for us at all times 
no matter how big or small our faith might seem. God, through Jesus, pulls Peter from sinking and even by scolding and saves him, and they get in the boat. But what about the rest of the disciples? What were they thinking? We know they were all afraid because even before Peter stepped out of the boat, Jesus told them not to be afraid. It is I, or the better translation is the original Greek, ego I me, I am, which is really from the Old Testament theme of God's identity. During Bible study this past week, a colleague noted it wasn't until they were all together Jesus, Peter, and all the other disciples in the boat that the storm was calmed. The miracle of Jesus stopping at the storm was for all of them. And those that were in the boat proclaimed, truly you are the son of God, foreshadowing what would be said of Jesus after he died on the cross. Those acts, or these acts of Jesus walking on the water and calming the storm demonstrate the connection and control God has over everything, including especially what God created. They also show God is with us in the storms, but also in silence, the stillness, like we heard in the first reading with Elijah. Elijah separated himself and wanted to see God in the wind, the earthquake, the fire. But God wanted to bring him back into the community and came to him in silence. And even Jesus sometimes leaves the community to pray in solitude. Last week, the crowds that Jesus dismissed, just dismissed was the miracle of feeding a lot of people. And it is as much about community as it is about food. When we are with God and community, the real miracles happen. We are community, a very small community today, <laughs> a church community, a community of Christ. Are we certain about what that means? About what that means for us as individuals, as a community, and as citizens in a diverse nation and world? Dietrich Bonhoeffer had a lot to say about being a Christian in a difficult community speaking out against the Nazi regime and ultimately being killed because of it. He challenged his readers to speak out against the church and government when they know there is harm being done and when there is an injustice that needs to be corrected. He had this to say about community. The person who's in love with their vision of community will destroy community but the person who loves the people around them will com create community everywhere they go. I'm gonna read that again. The person who's in love with their vision of community will destroy community, but the person who loves the people around them will create community everywhere they go. I think of Logan creating community everywhere he goes. So he has a really big birthday party coming up. We can claim our identity as children of God, but there's more to that about being a Christian. We are also disciples. Do we recognize and accept that all people are children of God? Do we see Christ in the face of everyone? We are all made in the image of God, Imago Dei. We say we're a welcoming church, or I've suggested we include being an inviting church, but when a new person joins us that may not look like us, are we judgmental, fearful, hesitant? God is in the food at the table in our community. By remaining in our boat or church, either the building itself or just to ourselves, who is missing from the larger community? How can we enlarge our table to include more children of God? Bonhoeffer also said that your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. How might we do that? Obviously not by judging others or excluding others and acting out of fear 
instead of understanding and love, living with open hearts and open minds. Jesus lived this every day, and it cost him his life too, for our sake, for our salvation, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. Encouraging others while living one's best life, not to earn salvation, but in gratitude for it. In the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, the author puts it this way. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Of course, we actually can't see that day approaching, and it's not for us to know, but it is coming. And we should act with more urgency as followers of Christ to speak out in love with indignity for those who have been pushed to the margins of society, to act in love to include everyone in our community. Martin Luther, like Jesus before him and Bonhoeffer after, recognized and taught that our freedom as a Christian comes because we are freed from trying to justify ourselves from, through the law. Instead, we are saved by grace alone. And then we are to cheerfully and wholeheartedly serve God and our neighbor. Not everything we do or say will bring people into this building for one hour of worship on a Sunday morning. But everything we do or say shows a lot about who we are. God is with us, Emmanuel. Let us show others what God's love looks and feels like, merciful and unconditional, with grace and peace in word and deed. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. Let's rise and sing that one, number 857. Please remain standing as we profess our faith with the words found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of grace and faith, your faithfulness is never ending and your righteousness becomes ours through Christ Jesus. Send the church to proclaim the gospel both near and far, in church buildings and on street corners, in person and through digital means. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of sky and sea, the plants, animals, mountains, and plains, proclaim your glory. Prosper the work of ecologists as they teach us new ways to care for the environment. Bring relief to areas recovering from natural disasters, especially the islands in Hawaii, most especially Maui, from the great fire that they had. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of peace and justice, you call us to live as your beloved community through the world. Instill in local, regional, national, and global political and civic leaders a desire to work for the well being of all people. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. God of care and compassion, you bring assurance when we are afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of therapists, nurses, healthcare providers, and all those responding to natural disasters. Comfort all who grieve and soothe any who are sick. We pray for those named on our prayer list and those named now aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrows. We pray for children and teachers preparing or those already started a new school year. Make your presence known in our work and play, in lively conversation and in quiet rest. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of new life, you send people to renew both church and society. We give you thanks for their lives of faithful service as examples of following your call. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our savior, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O God of resurrection and new life. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took cup, took the cup, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Bless this and do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to do this a little bit different because uh, we're such a small group, but we'll say the offering prayer now, but you can leave your offerings um, at the end of the service in the basket in the back. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All people are welcome to Christ's table. Come and eat what is good. Let's all gather on the floor in front of uh, the steps. Just follow me. <laughs> circle, 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 circle. Jerry, the body of Christ given for you. Picture us the body of Christ given for you. Chuck, the body of Christ given for you. May, this is the body of Christ given for you. Logan, the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Jackie, the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given to you, Kevin. Body of Christ given for you, Kevin. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you as you go over to the world. You can return to your seats. <laughs> the body of Christ given for you, Jim. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now into the end of the age. Amen. Our sending hymn is Shout to the Lord. It's number 821. Mark's going to play it all the way through. We've sung it before, but it has some little tricky parts. So.
will sing it twice and stand the second time. First of all, Laura Christensen um, wants me to ask you to make sure you read your email. She sent out an email about a, an event for the WIND youth. Um, she's talked about this before. What we've discovered is that everybody wants to help people at Christmas, but people need help all the time. So she had this idea, which I think is great, that we can help the youth at the wind center as they get, re get ready to go back to school, which a lot of them do, but it's still hot. So she's been collecting like flip flops and other things to give to them. Um, and we're gonna have a barbecue probably at Southside Park. So she wants you to respond to the email either, I can't come any of those days, I can only come this day, I can't, whatever, I want to help, but I don't know how I can, just so she knows that you read the email and that we um, want to do this, because we're going to need people to help out. Um, two Sundays, we're going to have the welcome meeting, the women of the ELCA, uh, on August 27th after the service, so bring snacks or something to share. Um, speaking of Welka, um, it's down a little bit further, but the Welka convention um, for our synod, all the women in our synod, is October 20th through 22nd in Auburn. If you're interested in going, um, ask me or Pat or Courtney, I was going to say Pastor Courtney, me or Pastor Courtney. <laughs> um, it's, it is business related, but I think it's also going to be very inspirational and heartfelt um, the board of the Welka, uh, Senate, uh, Welka met here yesterday to kind of run through the business of it, how it would go. They are also bringing in this family that you've heard me talk about from Honduras. Um, there is six of them. So two adults, well, three adults, one is a, a child or yeah, a child. Um, and then the younger ones. And they're going to talk about 
their journey from Honduras to the United States. We spoke to them a little bit yesterday with very broken Spanish and English and using our phones as translators. Um, but their journey took them eight months to get from Honduras to the United States. And they were fleeing because of very intense violence um, in Honduras, which there's documentation that a lot of the violence that exists in these countries in Central and South America are because of things the United States have done. So there's a good reason um, as Christians to help out. Courtney and Kevin and I are going to the Senate Assembly in Burlingame in September at the 15th to the 17th. So if there's anything you wanna know about, we'll have an opportunity also to tell you about it afterwards. And we're having a Bishop election. So it's going to be very exciting. Um, there's a little thing in your bulletin about save the date, Saturday, September 20th through 23rd, 20, 2023, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'm calling this cruising into the future, but it is not on a boat. We're going to try to make strategic planning and dreaming about the future of the church fun. So we're going to make it like a cruise, cruise themed. So anyways, we're working on details for that, but everyone is invited. Um, I can't mandate council to be there, but I'm hoping they all will be unless they're out of town. And, but we want everyone. Um, the future of the church depends on us. And if us is only 10 people, I don't know, maybe we're on the SS Minnow headed to Gilligan's Island for a three hour tour. I don't know, maybe, maybe we're going on a princess or Disney cruise, or are we on the Titanic? And we need to think about that and have some very serious discussions. So, Keep that in mind. There will be food provided so that we will just have fun and talk and dream, like I said. Okay, I think that's all. Yes, sure for now. <laughs> all right, please rise for the sharing of the peace and the dismissal. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God. And may God fill you with all the joy and hope in believing, and may the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace of Christ as we leave today.